now during COVID-19, obviously everybody's still at home. They're doing their classes at home and unfortunately some people don't have jobs and all that but this is really the time for innovation to drive forward uh, mark cuban had a very good uh, interview where he talked about how what's really going to lead the economy out of this situation is entrepreneurship um, out of everything else because innovation is the only thing that will kind of spur the change um, since what we talked about business models can't really be the same after this uh, whole situation so um, at least in more on the social entrepreneur side where do you think these opportunity gaps really are starting to exist? I, I definitely see there's a lot now in um, education tech as well as workforce development. Um, but where, what else should students right now, if they're interested in maybe coming up with ideas, what should they be focusing on? Maybe when I <laughs> They will say that maybe now also environment will be another thing that bioengineering and all this with the will be another place where students will focus on maybe we started to neglect the environmental impact for a little bit but I think with uh, everything that's happening now students will go there more and I think also this generation is more focused on social impact than the older one uh, all students I meet with even if they have a technology uh, based uh, uh, idea they still try to see how it can be have a social impact and how it can really help so they are really conscious about the social impact of whatever ideas they are working on. So I think environmental impact will be a big one. I think the fields that the areas that UCR are focusing on will still be important. Like ag tech is still an important, clean energy will remain important. Uh, bio, bioengineering is an, another great one. So I think those will still remain the same, but. Now the technology ones will uh, delivery will be uh, another big one. So now delivery is uh, like kind of online uh, education will be another one that people will focus on. And um, I think also now it's going to be more globally and internationally. We are facing this together. So now with more into technology and all that, it's going to be more globally that people will start to uh, work together more things that really bring everyone together. So uh, I think, uh, I don't know what you want to add, Mihai, to that. I think that, you know, at Seedla, but also, you know, some of the people that I met through UCR, there has, there has always been interest in mental health. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I think in many cases, it was assumed that it's, it's a process that has to be in person. Mm -hmm. And I think, in every seed lab cohort, we had at least two organizations or two startups that were focusing on mental health in a different form and format. And I think, you know, at the end of, you know, this crisis, a lot of this mental health focus will add the digital component. And I think, you know, the fact that obviously, you know, uh, there is a lot of need for support in this sector that that has always been there. But I think now with these uh, restrictions in, you know, meeting in person, people are forced to uh, innovate and think creatively and take what they've done in, you know, on a digital pl platform. And there's one example that I want to give in the first Seed Lab cohort, we had a very uh, inspiring organization in India. It's called Dansa Sitlat Klonak. And basically what they, there are two sisters involved, Gabby and Claudia Armenta. And they've been working on developing um, dancing and talking circles based on Aztec traditions. And they were organizing this in the communities and you know it was a hobby they they attended seed lab and you know we've been working with them on their business plan obviously they did the the heavy lifting and um they actually started putting a business together you know they have a structure a business plan and they became uh, extremely popular in the region uh, before you know last summer they got a lot of press for what they they've been doing but now because they cannot perform they cannot meet their beneficiaries they cannot organize talking circles circles or dancing circles so i think about a week ago they had their first online talking circle 
and you know they can do that and still provide support to their communities yep. their beneficiaries you know it, it will not be in person but the work will be the same and you know i think they will even reach uh even wider audience because they will not be limited by in you know the community in india or uh you know uh Eastern Coachella Valley. Now they can, you know, have people attending their uh, performances and meetings, you know, from all over the world. One of their biggest issues when they were actually meeting in person was that some of their meetings were canceled because they didn't have a physical space to mm -hmm. actually organize. And you know, in the summer when there are like you know, 40, 45 uh, Celsius degrees Celsius. It, it was impossible to meet in the park. Now, you know, that issue is no longer there. They can do their work every day, uh, just doing it online and they started doing that. So I think, you know, that will be a big, uh, they will see a lot of innovation there, like mental health, um, you know, people are suffering now, you know, five, four weeks into this crisis, everyone has been confined at home. There's got, there will be a lot of things happening into this sector. Yeah. I, I will just add is that the only way sometimes to force people to try to find innovative yeah. solutions and innovative alternative is a crisis. And uh, I think this will really force people to start to find innovative solutions. And after this day, we will find that this might be a better way for them to succeed and even exactly. out their customers and be more uh, productive. So sometimes you just need to get that stress that forces you to work and try find an alternative to just survive. And I think here where great ideas come and uh, I mean, we're keep monitoring and we're seeing how things are changing. I think even with schools that are now, they are all over the place trying to find online classes and be able to keep the school going. But I think it, when they figure it out and it's set up, this will be a huge thing for schools even, that now they are set up and uh, a lot of homeschooling might also be different, that it can be done now and they can still participate while being from home. So. A lot of things will change. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I... And, and I think, you know, not only that they will have, you know, wider audience, but also they will identify tools that will allow them to do their jobs cheaper. Yep. And, you know, that will, I think, encourage small organizations that have tremendous impact through their work just explode. Yeah, and I'm the, the one really um, interesting thing is usually during crisis situations where, when it's the biggest shift in uh, market share for companies, small businesses compared to corporations, due to the fact that the consumer wants that change or that innovation when they come out of that crisis. And if everybody's still and you're developing these digital platforms of digitizing what you're doing and figuring out your tech stack and all that, you can leapfrog over all your competitors. And when you come out of the crisis, everybody will recognize your brand for that. Um, so this is a huge opportunity as well. It is obviously a disaster situation, but it's a huge opportunity for uh, entrepreneurs that currently are working on something to make something that will accelerate faster post this situation than even if it was everything was perfectly fine right now and they're just growing at a normal pace.